Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Just wanted to say sorry I haven't managed to get a video out for a few weeks. It's been quite chaotic here in the UK as I'm sure it's been you know the same kind of situation around the world. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying home but this is a little video that I decided to do outside in the sunshine because you know it's nice to get out um, and it's a bit of a question and answer video. I did a bit of a question and answer on my Twitter um, a few weeks ago and then I put like a message out on YouTube and a few people asked me some questions so in this video hopefully I'm going to answer those questions. Hello I'm Luna and welcome back to my channel. So if you like what you see don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. I decided to get into the shade because like it's pretty hot here in the UK today. So let's have a look at these questions. Um, okay so first question was one from Mark C. He said what is my setup and teardown time and how is it varied with different mounts or scopes? So currently I have the pier which you can just see down the garden and I keep my EQ6R mounted on there permanently so set up at the moment with the pier and the EQ6 is about 15 minutes so that's literally I keep the scope together inside the house with the camera attached and like the, the pocket power box I bring it out plug all the, the cables in and then I'm ready to go with sort of like focusing and plate solving. When I was using it on the tripod it was a little bit longer because I'd have to polar align each time. I've already polar aligned the pier you see um, and that was probably about half an hour. I know polar alignment doesn't really take half an hour but when you're sort of grabbing it out of where it's kept and then picking a good spot in the garden it just it just adds up. So setup time about 15 minutes with the pier 30 minutes without the pier um tear down time literally has only ever been about 10 minutes for me and i say 10 minutes to get everything back into the house and then once i'm in the house i, I kind of wipe everything down or, or let it dry off if you know it's covered in dew and um, put all the cables away and that can you know it takes a little while but probably about another 10 minutes so hopefully that's that question answered mark thank you for commenting um so dj ronnie g asked do you use a cover when your rig is not in use or do you bring all or part of it inside between sessions so hopefully my previous question answered that a little bit i use i leave the pier outside and I bring the scope and everything else inside and he also really likes my pier so thank you very much um, Quinton he asked if there's any recommendations for a first telescope and mount that I can have besides my travel kit with a Skyguider Pro so your Skyguider Pro is is a pretty capable little portable mount anyway and so you could literally get a small refractor to go on that on that mount on on there something like um, a 60 EDF or something possibly even a 72 mm I've, I've not looked at the specs of the sky guider but if you're looking to get into astrophotography the best mount I can recommend to start off with is a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro and as for telescopes I started off with a Skywatcher ED80, so anything around the 80mm size, you know, with a focal length of about 600mm, maybe a little bit less, you know, that's a good that's a good scope to start off with. I always say refractors because people get frustrated with Newtonians when they have to learn collimation. Um, so if you're looking to get a first scope, weigh up the pros and cons between a refractor and a Newtonian, and then you can make your decision from there. So next question was from Francis, thanks Francis because I know you messaged me 
a little bit on my um, Astra Stace Facebook page. Um, and he says, he's got a few questions actually. And he's got, can you explain how to use filters with a single filter holder? So, on my rig I've got a, a filter drawer. And I use different filters with that filter drawer. So his first question is, do you need to increase gain or exposure time with a filter in? So for quad, tri-band or just a light pollution filter etc. The, the answer is yes. If you put in a filter in front of that sensor, you will have to increase your exposure time to get enough signal onto the sensor in the first place. So, for example, if you're using a broadband light pollution filter and you, you're getting good results with 120 seconds, if you were to put a tri-band filter, you would have to increase that exposure time significantly, perhaps to 240 seconds because it's classed as a narrowband filter. It lets very little light through compared to a normal light pollution filter. Um, if you're a bit confused about it, check out my other video on light pollution filters. Um, do you need to change focus when you take a filter out of a holder? Sometimes you do. So it depends if the, the filters are par focal. So but I tend to check anyway, regardless. So if I'm, I've done my RGB images with a, a general light pollution filter, and then I put in the tri-band filter, I will check focus after I've changed filter, just to make sure that I've not knocked anything, and just, you know, to make sure everything is pretty much spot on. And three, do you need to take separate calibration frames with the filter in, and another set with the filter removed? No, so you, basic, well it depends, flats you will need to do for each specific filter and darks and bias you don't need to, you can use the, the one set of darks and bias regardless of what filter you're using, it's literally just the flats and obviously if you're taking flats and you take dark flats you have to take dark flats to match each set of flats Hopefully that helps. Um, right, and then Christopher Meinhart, hopefully I said that correct. He said, my question would be, how do you tackle gradients under suburban urban conditions in your post-processing? So I use Astro Pixel Processor and I live in um, South Birmingham, which has some quite incredible gradients from the north I've got the city centre, the, like the light glow, and to the south I've got like countryside, but it's over people's houses. So my sky conditions vary quite greatly over direction. I use Astro Pixel Processor's um, light pollution removal tool, and I've seen comments online saying black magic is happening in that tool. Um, it's the only light pollution tool I use because it is so good, and. Then after I've used the light pollution tool, I use HLVG if I'm in Photoshop or SCNR to remove any green noise in the image as well in Pixinsight. I hope that helps. Um, right, keep looking. Scott Collier um, asked about how to collimate a refractor. So. You don't really hear about, pe I've never seen many people ask about how to collimate a refractor and some refractors it's possible, on others it's not. One of my refractors you can't collimate it, it's already pre-collimated and on the other one it has got a collimatable cell but unless it had a, a serious knock I wouldn't ex expect to have to collimate a refractor. I'm wondering if you mean a reflector and if that's the case, there's lots of YouTube videos out there. I am not the best person to collimate in reflectors, primarily why I use refractors. But if it's a reflector, that could be a whole nother video to do as well. So, Quinton, he asked again that he, he uses a 28 to 300mm lens with his Sky Guider Pro so he can zoom in and zoom out. 
but he's considering buying a telescope and they will have a fixed focal length. Any tips on finding your target with a, a fixed focal length? Okay, so with the Skyguider Pro, you might want to get a red dot finder to put on top of your telescope or even a tell rad and you can use that with apps such as like Stellarium or Sky Safari to help star hop to find your target with that fixed focal length. You can plug the details into those apps as well and it should show you your field of view that you, you should be able to expect to see. If you're going to get a computerised mount such as a HEQ5 or you know anything with go-to capability then you can use plate solving to get straight on target. Uh, Norman Haman, he asked, what's the best exposure, how, to how do you determine best exposure and quantity settings and has the guiding been improved with the pier? Okay, so first off, how do, to determine the best exposure? I tend to use a tool in SharpCat Pro, which you can basically it's it's called the smart histogram tool and it tells you the best gain to use and the best exposure settings to use got has guiding been improved with the peer yes i would say it has it was pretty good already but it's even better now and would i consider adding a red cat on top of my scope for a wide field view um, no, because I've already got a, so I've got two scopes, I've got a 102ED from Altair Astro, which is like my big scope, which you've probably all seen on my pictures recently, and I've also got a 72mm EDF scope from Altair, which is great for wild, uh, wide field, especially when I add um, a 0.8 reducer. Getting through these questions. Graham Hay said, how are you enjoying the Altair cameras and why did you go for those over other brands? Okay, so, right, Graham, I think Altair cameras are really, really good. I'm based in the UK and they are a UK company and that's primarily why I went for the Altair cameras. So, I saw back when I was first sort of getting into getting a dedicated Astro camera I saw a review in Sky at Night on their Hypercam and there was a bit of confusion about my order and they upgraded me for free to an even better camera and I just thought their customer service was spot on there was no problems with communication um, and I've always had really good communication with them and I've never really had a problem with any of the cameras compared to other brands I'm not against other brands it's just I prefer to shop local because I know that I can get the support pretty rapidly in this country if I needed it and um, yeah I'm not against other cameras and I'll be willing to try other cameras it's just that Altair have really helped me out and yeah I think their gram their cameras are absolutely top notch and hopefully you know they a, a few more people will get to experience them pretty soon and Neil Johnston he asked uh, looking at your scope I can see a few nice items there but is that a main scope a triplet or a doublet the Ascent 102 is a doublet it's not a triplet. I haven't had the money to buy a triplet yet. And there's lots of arguments on online, but a good triplet is better, uh, no, a good doublet is better than a cheap triplet any day. And what's your favorite target during galaxy season? That's from Quintin again. I really like to go for Max Chain, in fact I might go for it tonight. And he also asked why do I use a brick as a tripod? It's not a brick, it's two concrete blocks bolted together and bolted into concrete in the ground and it's a really good way of making a pier and it's stable and it makes my setup time rapid. And if I could upgrade one thing today, what would it be? 
if I could upgrade one thing today, it would be to have an observatory in my garden. Um, and that's just so that I could literally roll off the roof and start imaging rather than cloud dodging and setting up then setting down again because you know weather's turned nasty so that was my question and answer i hope you've enjoyed this video um, i'll try and get some more done pretty soon just wanted to let you know i'm all still here i'm still doing astro as and when i can and i want you all to keep safe and take care of your families and look out for one another and stay home and we'll all get through this pretty soon so as always thanks for watching and bye for now